Welcome to the Umkamas Canoe Marathon here in Hella Hella, which is about 30 kilometers or so from Richmond in KwaZulu Natal. And this is a race with a reputation known throughout the world as the toughest marathon undertaken by K1s and K2s. But that hasn't stopped more than 250 competitors coming here for the start. Um, not, not too much for this race in particular. I've actually just been trying to build up fitness again um, for black water sprinting because that's my focus. But uh, it's just, this is more just to enjoy it and um, have a good time on the river. Well, last night my partner had his appendix out, so I was going to swim the back of the boat with him and he knows the river really well and I had to scratch for a new partner. Um, I found Scott Maynard, he's really strong, but except I have to drive, so it's going to be very interesting. It's a two-day event and the premier white water event on the canoeing calendar with K2s in predominance. Each leg is around 30 kilometers long and that means that the finishing times on each day should be somewhere just inside two hours. The approach to the first rapid is always very tricky and it's so easy so early in the race to get things horribly wrong. Indeed, rapid number one does have a reputation for claiming many victims. And Robbie Herrefelt, who's going for his 10th straight win this year, is going to be very careful. He's working alongside Graham Monteith. They face a very strong challenge this year, though, from the 19-year-old pairing of Sean Biggs and Sven Bruss. Biggs lives very close to this stretch of water, so they know it very well. Also look out for Darrell Bartow and Brett Irvin. They're another powerful combination and the Colin simkins Piers Cruikshanks partnership. That boat belongs to the interesting doubles partnership of Alan Van Collar and Hunky Munfroni, two of the most experienced paddlers here, but having a few problems there. Van Collar, of course, is the national sprint champion and represented South Africa at the Olympic Games in Sydney last year, while Munfroni is the current doozy champion. Meanwhile, up in front, the race starting to sort itself out. The leaders are approaching rapid number four, and it's Biggs and Bruss leading with Barto and Irvin in second place. And here they are. That's Biggs and Bruss on the left. Barto and Irvin on the right there in second place. The defending champions at the moment struggling just a little bit. They're in fourth place. Monteith and Herifelt with Rob Alario and Roy Pepper. They're in fifth. Over the last three years, the paddlers have had to endure scorching temperatures that at times have reached 40 degrees. But this year, the conditions are a good deal better. They're overcast, and that should make life far more comfortable. The river conditions are also good, but it's absolutely imperative that the paddlers, especially the novices, choose the correct line. Incorrect lines could lead to a breaking of the boat. And although repairs are possible, they aren't always successful. That's Biggs and Bruss, the first to negotiate their way through rapid number six. And this is considered the tactically most challenging on the first day. Biggs and Bruss are followed closely by Daryl Barto and Brett Irvin. They're doing very well in second place with Dion Bruss and Gavin Tarr in third. Just a few meters behind them in fourth are the defending champions, Herifelt and Monty. At least the competitors know that once they've gone through rapid number six, after that, it's all relatively comfortable to the finish at Josephine's Bridge. Meanwhile, back at uh, number six, some of the middle markers are really struggling and are just simply overpowered by the conditions. A number of competitors came here a week or so before the race to get an idea of the course. So we'll see whether that uh, benefits them. Meanwhile, Herifelt and Monteith well, they're not going to take first place today, so they're going to have some work to do on the second stage. They're going to have to settle the second behind Biggs and Bruss. And they've opened up a gap of about half a minute on the rest of the field. So it's going to be very, very interesting on day two. Meanwhile, back at number eight, some back markers are, well, enjoying the river. And that's from where many of our pictures are coming today, covering a race like this. Believe me, without the help of a helicopter, is simply impossible.
So it's Biggs and Bruss who cross the finish line to complete the first day in an exceptional time of one hour, 48 minutes and one second. Herafelt and Monteith, they have to settle for second, 26 seconds behind. Barto and Irvin, a third. Yes, I think today, uh, today is our day. Um, I don't know if we have the same kind of fitness as other guys, but uh, just living right here near the river and stuff, I knew my lines well. We've done some tripping for the race, and uh, when it came to the day, we picked up any mistakes that the guys made. On to day two, and it's a staggered start with the back markers going off first. Shortly after seven o'clock in the morning, but this means that the leading boats don't go out until about a quarter to eight. Biggs and Bruss are off, and they'll be wanting to extend their gap. Just 26 seconds their advantage over last year's champions, Herafelt and Monteith. There is a fundamental difference in the course on day two. There's less white water, and that will mean more paddling. The course really is quite beautiful as the river takes its way through some deep valleys, giving the paddlers some beautiful views, if of course they have the chance. But what a race we're left with. Those are the three leaders, that half minute advantage that Biggs and Bruss had has been eaten into by Monteith and Herifelt and indeed Barto and Irving. So what a race it is. Meanwhile, Simpkins and Crookshanks, they remain in fourth place and they're working as hard as they can to catch up the leading trio. The weather's held out nicely as well. Despite the fears of rain, you can see some quite low cloud cover there, but it's made the conditions almost perfect. Herafelt and Monteith have managed to finally squeeze their way clear. What a performance this has been by the defending champions. But for the majority of the field, the river conditions provided the opportunity for much drama. Like the Australian paddlers, Brian Badger and Winston Swart, they traveled halfway around the world to get here, but they could only arrive at the overnight stop in darkness after their K2 was destroyed in one of the rapids. There you can see Rob Alario and Roy Pepper. They've now moved into fourth. Meanwhile, Dion Bruss and Gavin Tarr are working together with Simpkins and Crookshanks. But to get the true atmosphere of this race, you've got to look at the back markers. Dave Fraser and Jeremy Chaplin battle. They just about avoid our cameraman, but end up with one or two other paddlers in the bush. One or two alarm bells are starting to ring up in front though. Herafelt and Monteith got in front. They opened up a bit of a lead, but they haven't been able to extend it. And Biggs and Bruss are fighting back. And this race is far from over. Barto and Irvin, they're still going well in third. And in fact, Herafelt and Monteith were to learn that the efforts they made at the beginning of the second stage to make up that gap for the leaders was eventually gonna cost them because Biggs and Bruss timed their run superbly to win. In fact, they had a 30 second gap at the end over Herifelt and Monteith, beaten for the first time in a long while. Daryl Barto and Brett Irvin in third. Our game plan basically was to, to keep them off as long as possible and then they caught us and we had, a, we had quite, a, quite a scare earlier on because uh, we got a bit stuck up. I, I took a wrong route and uh, we got a bit stuck up and we had to work really hard for about 10 minutes to catch them. And, after that, it was it was all happening together, and then uh, we were really just uh, we got uh, Brett and them. They they had a bit of uh, they were quite unlucky up there. They got stuck up on some rocks because they're quite heavy, and we got through robbing us. And then it was Robbie robbing us all the way. And uh, at the at the rapid about ten about four k's up, then uh, we made about 15 meters on them, and we just held it on to the end. 